Have you ever been told by a coach or by a teacher that you are overthinking? Then stay tuned. This lesson is for you. That you're over, 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 you're you're over, 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 do you just kind of passively let it all come in and do exactly whatever they say? Or do you realize somehow that you're going to have to figure out which parts are going to work for you and which parts won't? That's not an easy thing to do. All the things people say about singing can often seem really contradictory. And you might have very similar results from people saying very different things. And people disagree on what's the right way and the wrong way to sing, to teach singing, and they might have the same goal in mind. But they use very different words and they feel very strongly about why those words are the right ones and other ones aren't. That's fine. But if you're the one trying to learn how to sing, you're going to have to make some decisions about this. So today I want to help you make those decisions. This is where we're going to depart a little bit from the track system I've been talking about. Because the track system alone can't make you a great singer. I think it can help you, but it can't make you a great singer. And you may have a feeling like, wow, this is really analytical and mathematical. And that's not for me, man. Hey, that's, that's okay. Let's talk, though, about how you're going to organize the thoughts you do have about singing. New school singing is what you can call a meta technique. That means that it's a technique of techniques. What I'm trying to give you is a way to be a student of singing a lot less than it is a way for everybody to do things exactly the same and get the same results. One concept that you need to use if you're going to be going down this path is that you're kind of the teacher and that all these people you might hire or consult on YouTube or in person are working for you, not the other way around. And at the same time, you need a way to organize what they're saying because it all comes at you so fast and when you try to do what they say, do what I say, do what someone else says, even if you're only sticking to one of us, it can make your brain just want to explode. Part of the problem is that so far, no one has really presented a system for organizing your thoughts about singing. People compete about what's the, the right way to place the voice or the right way to do this technique, what you should think about. Should you use imagery or should you use uh, scientific language or should you this or should you that? You can make these decisions for yourself, but only if you have a clear idea of what you're being told. And if you start to get good at it, you may notice and most Great singers notice that they don't just take all their information from one place. Actually, they take pieces from just about everybody that they meet. Anyone who's got something to teach, they're ready to take it. But at the same time, they're not going to just accept and not going to just integrate into their own technique just anything. So you want to do this, right? But how? So new school singing has a way to organize your thoughts on singing and also the thoughts that other people are suggesting to you. And that's going to be in three categories. And these three categories happen to be very well represented by the logo for new school singing. And let me explain a little bit how this 
triangle works. It's divided into three equal sections, but you'll notice the little person's head can only be in one place at one time, the top part there. And yet, there's a whole triangle there. And this is a way to represent that when you're thinking about one of the three parts of these triangles, you need to be 100% thinking about that. Don't try to do everything at the same time. So the three main areas when we're talking about just technique in singing, everything anyone can say ever about singing falls into three categories and only three. Position, motion, and attitude. So let's start with the simplest thing we can talk about, and that's a position. Where is my finger? Well, we can talk about this position relative to my head. We could talk about we could talk about where it is in the room. We could give GPS coordinates for this position. Positions are something real and objective. Something is in a particular position relative to other things, or it's not. If you are on the floor, you are on the floor. If you are floating above the floor, you are no longer on the floor. If I'm standing right here, I I am right here. The whole If we look at my whole body, it's right here. And it's not 10 feet behind me. It can't be in both places at the same time. And it may not be that we can really for sure tell what the position of something is. Like, for instance, it's very difficult to figure out what is the exact position of your tongue. That's why the track system has these nodes. It's to help deduce the position of your tongue using what we can figure out about overtones and how they relate to position as long as we keep certain other things from moving. So that's, that's a way of talking about positions. And when we look at how two positions interact with each other, then we have something called motion. So if I'm standing here and then I go back 10 feet, we can talk about the motion that I had to use to get from one position to the other. So position and motion are very, very simple things to explain. Attitude is not so easy to explain. So let's try just a little thought experiment. So imagine in your mind right now, you are standing. That's all. You are standing still, and you are not moving anywhere. You're just standing, and you're maintaining your posture. Now, I would say that is a particular attitude. And let's say someone comes and very gently starts to push on you, just just, just a, a little tiny bit, a little bit, not a lot. And I tell you, now, whatever you do, don't move from this position. So now you are still standing, still in the same place. You haven't moved, so there's been no motion. Your position is the same, and your motion is nil. But your attitude is completely different now, because you have to resist this person that's pushing against you. One, when you were standing just by yourself, without anyone pushing on you, that was much more relaxed. And now you're having to use all this tension to stay where you are. That's an attitude. When people talk about uh, placement, for instance, they say, uh, you know, try to uh, imagine that the voice is uh, in your mask. And they, they, they talk about like wearing a mask and they say, see this area, just put the voice here. Now, like we know from science that you can't do that. But the image is still very useful for a lot of people. And likewise, if they say, now make sure it doesn't go in your throat. A lot of people find this very useful. And this kind of language can be extremely powerful for unlocking your potential as a singer. 
The problem is, attitude without specific position and motion usually doesn't get the results that we're after. Now, in the past, in the great old schools of singing, this wasn't such a big problem because everyone was from like the same village or even if you weren't from uh, if, if you weren't from Florence and you went to Florence to study with a teacher. Now, everyone who's around you is speaking Florentine and, you know, everyone's got the same accent and you're from you're all from kind of the same world and you still had much more in common with the person teaching you than is often found today where you might have a teacher from New York and a student from Korea coming from completely different cultures and speaking completely different native languages. So if the teacher and the student talk about a certain vowel, for instance, the whole sense of what's going on is based on different position and motion because they come from different cultures and a lot of position and motion the way people move their mouths and their bodies when they speak, it's kind of contagious from one person to another. And the more time you spend with people, the more it becomes similar. So when we look at people from a certain part of the USA, for instance, they all kind of tend to speak the same way, and then you can notice they even maybe use similar body language. What we have is these, these two rather concrete elements of position and motion that can sound really complicated to talk about, but boil down to really simple things. And then we have this really simple seeming attitude, this whole component of attitude in teaching singing. And it seems really simple at first, you know, like, oh, just imagine your voice is, is placed in your mask. Just imagine, you know, just avoid having it in the throat or... Oh, let's got, uh, uh, give it squealo. Or, uh, you know, make sure you, you, you use a, a round vowel. These kinds of uh, words about feelings, about images, can be extremely powerful because they're so simple. But what they boil down to is really, really complex things that are made up of a whole lot of specific position and motion. Should you use specific and objective language to describe what's going on in singing? Or should you use imagery? Yes, <laughs> use them all. Position, motion, and attitude have a lot to do with each other. So what to do about this? I use these concepts to help organize all the thoughts that you get about singing. So if you think about how you conceive of your singing or how your teachers talk to you about singing and you notice, well, 90% of this is attitude. It's not something concrete. I can't really prove if I'm singing in the mask or not. And I see I have this deficit. Well, that means you should look for something with more position and motion. You can ask your teachers questions that are more specific and have to do with position and motion. Remember that little man. He's only got his head in one part of the triangle. But his feet are in a foundation that's made out of the parts he's not thinking about right now. He needs to be focused on whatever he's trying to work on right now. Because if he starts to try to work on all three things at once, he's overthinking.